so hello everyone welcome again and uh, in this video I'm gonna continue the spec flow series and we have already seen what is the spec uh, scenario outlines and how we can execute the same test case multiple time with different data and this video will cover the tables in spec flow so what are the tables like in case uh, what you have seen in the scenario outline you have to execute which is the you have to execute this scenario <coughs> if you are following this uh, series and you have watched the previous video you will understand this so uh, this test case will execute three times right but uh, what are the changes there we are going to pass the data only single step so what if I need to execute this only one time and in, in uh, only this step will repeat again and again so here we have uh, tables in the spec flow let's understand so the table is used when you need to handle a large amount of data in a step of a state uh, in a, st a step of test case it will be more clear below example okay so you can see here the table is also used to data to pass data multiple time as as a parameter in the test step but it's not the same as scenario outline so only the key difference is scenario outline will uh, execute the whole test case multiple time and the tables will execute only steps or you can check this content uh, i will provide the link in the description box so you can change it uh, read out the complete difference between the scenario outlines and the um, scenario outlines and the tables so let's switch to the uh, Visual Studio and check this thing practically how's fun how's work. So I'm gonna repeat in the same scenario again, but this time we'll perform this by table. So let me example let me comment here example as scenario outline and example this will be the example of tables tables and spec flow okay so the very first thing i need to change the scenario outline to scenario so i just going to remove this scenario outline here now scenario yeah. <coughs> now i do not need to, uh, to pass the example here so i'm going to remove this example i'm going to put it here right here so let's just remove so this is the Gherkin syntax to write a table so what's going on here here also we don't need to this syntax okay so this is the way uh, you can create a table so in every uh, execution in, uh, of this step it will uh, pass the new data so now we have to make changes in the step definition also so this is the step definition so I'm gonna change it little bit like it will return the object of table so i'm going to just remove it and when i remove it you can see that the color is purple now I create a new step definition okay so here's the step definition just copy it and pass it in the step definition file so now you can see it's passing a table format an object of table so let's see how can we retrieve the data and how can we pass the data into the input field okay so <clears throat> now this is a array list so to retrieve the data array list we must need to use for each loop or for loop or any kind of loop so this is the for each i'm going to use for each loop and here it will return the tables table row so i'm going to use the table row so what exactly i need i need a values so uh, this is the table assume this is the table and these are the table rows and these are the value under the table so I'm going to go in the same format so tables row in okay, tables row in table dot rows under this loop I need to pass another loop to get the values leave so row so what I need I need a value so string value in row okay so 
Okay, open and close it. So here also I get some error. What is this? Cannot convert the key value bring to string. Okay. Okay. So this will become as a row as values. That's oh, fine. So <coughs> now what I need exactly I need to pass this value. So I'm gonna pass change the message as a value. So in the input field, this time we are going to send a key which is a value, which is a message, and the message will come from here. Yeah, like the first execution, it will come as a hello, and the second execution it will come as a, a code one, and the third execution it will come as a coding. So uh, before it, let's change the statistics little bit. So in every execution, if you want to see it clearly, uh, I need to pass the click button here. So and after click I'm gonna add one more line here driver do to find element to clear this field so I'm gonna uh, copy the same line and I'm gonna clear the field to get uh, it's, it's, it's to check it's working fine or not so dot clear I can use to clear the field clear method is there now put some weight so it will be visible easily okay just comment it out yeah. okay so now let's execute the test case and observe the output uh, so this is the one way to get this and there is some error in the spec flow uh, feature file already contain the file center okay so we are using the same scenario uh, in the uh, two times so I'm gonna change it like uh, fill the form input form using table so I change it little bit now the message will not show the error should be resolved so okay it's gone now and here we have another test case using table so now let's execute this one so when I run it the browser will open and uh, the form is open Hopefully I maximize this and in the, you can see the first message is hello there and wait for the second one okay code one is there wait for third one third, third, third. okay colleague is there fine so it's working fine so this is the way you can create a table oh I cross the browser so testing is gonna fail so no issue so in this way you can use the tables in the spec flow and you can retrieve the data in this form so indirectly this is a uh, this is a li uh, array list of array list which contains the rows and you can find out the rows there and in every rows every rows will contain some value you can say the list of values so you can get the values there so using you need to use a nested for loop for this now nested loop you can you have to use a nested loop so you can use it and another way to get the data is called dictionary table dictionary so um, we'll cover that in next video or you can just read it out the text here so here in this step definition like we are going to get the data using the dictionary so you can create the dictionary also so let me just copy paste and we'll show you how can you get the data in this way also so i'm just going to copy this data and switch to the step definition and there is a loop yep. so i'm gonna copy this data here so this time we have only one string like uh, we have a single value here and in the single column in the uh, table so I'm gonna use uh, string there and it will must have a uh, two value like we have to pass the value in the key and value form so I just do it similarly okay now let's do one thing add one more field here so I can work now will not work in this way so I'm gonna insert message two here message two I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna copy this. So now we have two columns, and I'm gonna enter the dummy data here. Okay. 
so now what we can do uh, we can get the data in this dictionary and we can you can see uh, here is a message like dictionary dot contain aid 0 and 1 so th at the 0th index it will pass this value and the one first index it will pass this value so the data will store in the dictionary uh, dictionary list so now let's move to get the value so how you can get the value from the dictionary so value will come in the form of key and pair so <coughs> if I'm gonna retrieve the data here so dictionary and here I need to pass the ID you know, the ID so here I need to pass the ID so let's do it one by one so here I'm gonna print a message console is it console message will be console dot right line and the first element from the dictionary I need to print so dictionary 0 uh, you can say we have to pass the ID here okay. was showing me an error man Okay, there is a mistake in the input or somewhere. So uh, here we need to pass a key. So this time this will be key and this will be value. So I'm gonna pass a hello key here and this will return this will uh, aid the value of uh, it, it will print the value of uh, hello is is fg fg so i'm not going to pass in the any element so this time it will print on the console so let's run it and check it and hope this way also you will prefer it's depend on the requirement you can use any way and both are fine just we need m uh, our main target to get the value from the table so we have the table here so now let's execute and check the output it will return the value of hello <coughs> it will work in a execution will work in similar way so it will open the simple form and enter the first value hello hello and the second value over there fc fc okay now this time it's going to another another way like all the values going to be printed over there so this is a code one and the next value of the row hg in the similar fashion the codec and the next value of the codec is show okay so this execution is done i guess let's wait wait for the output once the execution is done now we can check the output from here so you can see the message fg fg two times the first time is going to print from now it's it's execute three time exactly so it's going to print this message fgfg which is the first index of the dictionary you can see here hello key hello key it's going to print a third time so it's all about the tables in the spec flow if you have any question if you have any doubt you can comment me out so we'll try to fix it and thank you so much for watching and they will provide the link in the description box so you can read out that complete theory so it will be really helpful like uh, that is the main topic is use of the tables and which you already understand and the table versus the scenario and what is the minor difference between them and the complete example of table in a spec flow and uh, what are the important top like important points and how to read the data from the table and how to transform data table and transform table into the data table uh, thank you